This is a film about routers. Born in the 1950s, all plunge routers have been made to the same basic plan ever since. Each new model copies the ones before, with minor improvements, and nobody dare change it. Here's a selection. Large or small, it's the same thing. A motor spinning a cutter on telescopic legs with springs inside. Let's have a look. There's a limit to the height of tube that the spring can be effective in. Put in a limit of 50 millimeters on bits and therefore on the mortises and tenons. You push down to get the bit to cut both hands on handles either side of the motor. Lock it down and move it around a template with a bearing guided cutter. The router on its own weighs 4.9 kilos, but to engage the bit, we have to push down that much. That's heavy enough for an adult, let alone a teenager. And the enormous problem of all routers is that they scream at you well into the pain threshold. Some years ago, Woodrat introduced the plunge bars as a retrofit for most standard routers. And it means that you can use one hand simply to squeeze the bars and drop the router. To demonstrate the action of the plunge bar, on the router, I can squeeze the bars together and show you that from a weight of 6.9, it now weighs, it doesn't put any more weight on it. So I'm not pushing down on the handles like that. I'm simply squeezing the bars together and it means that the whole plunge bar turns the router into a mortiser because I can use one hand and cut down and down and down into the work. So ditch the springs and ditch the telescopic legs. Let me show you how it goes together. These are what in effect are two twin towers. This is one, that is the other, and they go together clamshell-like, like that, and screw together. That's nice twiddle. The plunge bar is now a little bit changed and it fits into there and there. Sliding in, and that is the plunge bar with a back part and a front part. This is the motor housing in the middle with the two fins on either side, and the fins fit down in the slots between the two towers. With the uh, motor housing in place, we can then put the wheels in place at the top. And then we need the wheels for the bottom, these two. The square base can track straight edges and templates when going freehand. And its geometric shapes are easy to shield for dust collection. So that's the motor housing rising and falling. And we can put the cap on for the moment. Then we take the wire. and round and then down underneath and up and here she is fully wired up. Now we're free to use the more subtle wire drive to control the rise and fall of the router, grip the bars and up she goes, letting gravity bring it down under control. The single wire is in tension 
and equaled out both either side and fore and aft. The pulleys give mechanical advantage. Let's outline some of our innovations. So we've turned this router into a router mortiser and gained fingertip control of the x-axis, y-axis and the z. No springs means no limitation on the upward travel of the motor in the gantry. We're able to put um, almost a hundred millimeter bit in there, double the usual offering, and means working from either face, we can work eight inch timber without compromising smaller work, such as the sixteenth of an inch finger joints in a ring box. Now the top bar, which is a useful carrying handle, but when lifted, we can remove the cap, take the motor from the motor casing, and swap it for a motor of a different kind or quality. So the same base unit can offer a choice of different kinds of motors, standard, better quality, or even cordless. We did make a mock-up of a two and a quarter horsepower motor, and it does fit in. It was successful, but we thought, surely it doesn't take two and a quarter horses to make a jewellery box. It it's, seems like absurd overkill. The off-the-peg CNC spindle router trade is extensive and many motors have a common 65 millimeter diameter. They tend towards 800 watt and up to 25,000 RPM. So oak is no problem. We need a tool that is robust enough for site work and at the same time clever enough for a top craft workshop. It would be a major advance if we can replace the noisy air-cooled motors with brushless motors or with water-cooled motors. And that could be quiet and deadly accurate. Absolute bliss. And of course it opens up the whole education market because you can teach and not have the screaming routers. We've done away with the difficult plastic gauge to offer you precise control with the vernier. Place the half inch diameter straight, change the bit and zero it. Its top is also at zero. Then lower the rod against the scale to the depth you want. It has the vernier part of the scale. See how the scale moves with motor and bit onto the work where the cut begins. Now, over to the engineers to translate our, my scruffy little model into a robust and beautiful machine that will knock our socks off. This is Martin, over and out.